next meeting of the Harrison County Board of Education for December 20th, 2022. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And since Mr. Hope standing to make the slide, he can wait. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Might be the best of me. <laughs> All right, we have uh, uh, some special recognitions and presentations tonight. And uh, first up is uh, really one of our better meetings uh, every year where we welcome Dr. Kelly Nelson. Almost does a lot. Pretty sad for that, isn't it? So 22 years ago, a kind of skinny brown haired kid showed up and handed out a check and said we'd be back. And 22 years later, this not so skinny, not so brown haired guy is back. And once again, I'm the face of, I'm the voice of the charity, but really the heart of the charity and what we do is really this community. You know, 2022 has been a pretty terrible year in a lot, a lot of ways for a lot, a lot of people. The economy is really tough and, and things are tough out there this charity thanks to this community it's really been a banner year for us we finally found our our uh, ultimate project we're the new uh, naming sponsor for the soon to be built inclusive playground out by the bridge in bridgeport so we're pretty jacked about that uh, we're back to support two of our favorite things the school nurses discretionary fund the children's apparel fund and this year we have some extra money and found a program that's down here that's in need something called families in transition and as i understand it families in transition try to get uh, people off the streets and get the first month and last month of rent paid so we took that on this year to fund it and it's our vow to either come back and refund that again next year or at least find a new owner for it so between the hundred and fifty thousand dollars we did for the inclusive playground and the fifty thousand dollars we have tonight it takes what we've given back to this community because of this community over two million dollars back from this charity to this community so we're blessed to be able to do it and we'll be back if you want to let uh, one of you let everyone know where that money goes into uh that we were seeing. Sure, sure. Every donation that he sends in, we have a children's apparel program. We call it CAPS. If you're in the school system, that's what it is. And any child in need that need extra clothing, shoes, or whatever, we have that fund available and schools can reach out. Uh, Mr. Kirby is overseeing that and taking care of it for us. And it's just, can't say enough about that program. I used it as a school administrator. I'm sure you all did. The I want to say the Families in Transition program mm -hmm. that you've uh, so graciously helped us with this year. We work uh, with Title and United Way also to help fund this. We had three families just this week that reached out. That need is growing uh, exponentially, really more than 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 we uh, had anticipated. So you helped three families this week. So we appreciate that for the families in transition. It, it's it's not a me, it's a we. And yeah, it's really well, this community every, doing it. right. So that's the way the school system is. If it wasn't for everybody here and support from you and our community uh, resources and families, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So can't say enough, the school uh, nurses fund, the discretionary nurses fund purchases glasses. I mean, you name it if they need it and it's medical. And uh, of course, Jody Sperry uh, kind of oversees that and works with the school. So. Can't really say enough, so we sure appreciate you as a partner. Thank you working with us. We'll be back. All right, that moves us down to uh, item B, which is our double A state cheerleading champions, Lincoln High School. Okay. <laughs> the coaches. Yeah, who's our coaches? Would you come up? 
Oh, here we go. Mandy Brown and assistant coaches Candy Cooper. Thank you. And of course, the school principals back here, we have uh, Mr. Decker. Nothing happens in a vacuum. You need support from oh, absolutely. and everybody here. And just like I was uh, saying with member children's charity, there's nothing we do in our schools that that works well without families and support and the work and time that, that you guys put in. There's probably a lot of volunteer time, <laughs> a lot of travel and a lot of um, extra effort for that. So we can't say thank you enough for that. And if you'd like to tell a little bit, isn't this the first time in a while that you've been state champion? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. uh, it's been 13 years since baseball. Since baseball yeah. was a state champ. And then cheer since 2007, uh, I do wow, believe. Yeah. So I know I got a big excited thing from Mr. Decker the night he won. He got some nice pictures, so it was great to see. And it's, it's really exciting. Thank you from Harrison County for Thank putting you. in the time and for working with these uh, young ladies and young men to create such a great program. Thank you. It's Thank always you. nice when we can bring it home. Right? It is. <laughs> Absolutely. So a lot of hard work that goes into it, that yeah. <laughs> when I win. So if uh, Mr. Tucker's going to hand out some certificates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Decker, is one there for Mr. Decker. Okay. And as you notice, he's wearing a, a Cougar's shirt, but it does say baseball. <laughs> that's, <laughs> but, but that's okay. Yeah. And it's black. What do you think? <laughs> Can you get him a gold shirt? We can work on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want to go ahead and start with it. Do you want to read their names or do you want me to? No, we want to yeah. do that. No, why don't you all come up? <laughs> you can just read down their names and then you can give them their certificate. Yes, that way. Yeah. That way. Turn yeah. that way. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone get a picture. Yeah. 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 If I read your name, you can just kind of put your hand up so we can say. Put a name with the face, okay? And then you get okay, so you have to get down to the front, front, like more at the front. Yeah. Normal picture, normal picture. Yes. All the way down to spend. Yep. So we have um oh you want to do the picture right now? They're they're already down. Oh, let's grab the picture and then we can get in here. So that. Up here. <laughs> okay, we're good. All right, let's recognize this team. We have Carrie Nero. That's the first And we have Isaiah Holloway. Emily Brown. Katie Swagger, let's go. Uh, 11th grade, Morgan Aldaker. Tyler's. Olivia Hayes. Trinity Eldridge. Oh, Maybe I should say junior, that's more official. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Juniors. And then we have sophomores, uh, Summer Moore. Dorsey. Uh, is that Zara? Zara Kilman Stinkins. She's also a sophomore. Bailey Dragu, uh, sophomore. Dragu. Dragu. Okay, just tell me. You know. <laughs> uh, Riley Lee, also a sophomore. Kayla Sayers, sophomore. Krista. Oh, Verona Haas. Okay, she's a sophomore. Cheyenne Thomas, sophomore. And I just want to say thank you to Mandy yes, Brown and to um, Candy Toothman and also David Decker. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Decker. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you. I love your shirts. Thank you. I love all the glitz. It's all part of it.
Wow. She makes these shirts. <laughs> you guys, it's a huge accomplishment. Thank you from Harrison County. Thank you from our board. We, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Be here when we get it. It's all good. You think West Virginia has a chair? There's so much work, my boy. It's on the state board. If I'm not mistaken, oh. I remember seeing it and I remember reading it. Paris County okay, and the state. All right, Tim brings us down to item C of our special recognitions and presentation. We have a presentation on career and technical education uh, from Dr. Geraldine Beckett, who is uh, our latest addition to the CTE program. We also have Shelly uh, McKee here. She's working in that department. And then Mrs. Knight. Thank you. So that's why you came, right? Was part of this. And giving you some notes that I put together. We've got a lot of changes in the CT department. Um, thanks. All right, so the oh, we get one. So I started in this position September 30th, and it was about a couple of weeks later that I learned that Heidi was going to be leaving. Um, we have been busy uh, making sure that things are not falling through the cracks, making sure that. Um, our teachers are getting what they need, uh, making sure that WVDE gets what they need from Harrison County, as well as a lot of other things. So the very first page, I just put that there because uh, when we had our countywide CTE advisory committee meeting back in November, this was something I shared with them. Uh, and at the top, you'll see it's CTE statistics. And the first words on that slide, participants, concentrators, and completers. So normally, and in the past, we only gave data to WVBE on completers. Those were students who had completed four classes in, in one program, in the same program. Now they're wanting data on concentrators, which is a student who's completed at least two classes in a CT program, where four are required. So this is uh, this is a change in what they have been doing. Uh, participants are those that have taken at least one class in the CT program. So when we look at the um, the first hyperlink there in the left column, that's a hyperlink that you can go to to see the CT enrollment for each county in West Virginia and also the numbers of participants, concentrators, and finally completers that they have in each county. If you have a device, you can go to the WVDE homepage and follow the path below. From the homepage, you would go to Technical and Adult Education, then Career Tech West Virginia, which by the way is the new brand for CTE in West Virginia. That's what they're calling it, Career Tech West Virginia. And then you would go to the page, Facts About CTE. When I went to this page, uh, I wanted to look at different counts 
So over in the right column, we have percentages for the number of completers, students that have completed all four um, courses in a CT program. And I want to know what you guys notice about the trends in that data. If you look at the names of the counties, Tucker, 23% of their students in Tucker County High School uh, are CT completers. Calhoun, 25%. Berkeley, 3. Marion, 7. Harrison, 11. Mon, 6. Kanawha, 8. Anybody? Smaller counties have bigger uh, percentages. Yes, the more rural, the less populated, the more rural the county is, the higher the percentage of completers. And when we look at the difference between Harry, Harrison and Mon counties, we always, you know, Harrison kind of in the shadow of Mon, seemingly smaller, um, less able, uh, less progressive. Um, but if you really look, Harrison, in this case, has 11% of our students are CT completers in the high schools, and we have a larger airport and more flights than the airport in Morgantown. Uh, we also have a higher population than Morgantown without counting students. So those facts are often overlooked. Um, but when you look at the counties that have a more urban population, you'll see that, of course, less of those students become completers. So there's a lot of information at that hyperlink if you're ever interested in looking at it. It's kind of revealing and interesting. And at the very bottom, just taking one additional class, one, one CT course, just taking one CT course, a students more likely to graduate from high school, more likely to be employed after high school, more likely to be enrolled into your college and better compensated in the year after high school. So we can see that even a student being just a participant in the CT program, the, what the positive effects of that can be for that student. So um, on the next page, there's my job title at the top. And about 50% of the funding for this position comes from CTE funding, and it's uh, for professional development um, and teacher coaching. So the things that we're doing with professional development, Heidi shared the budget with me. Uh, I plan professional development sessions for the first and second semester uh, that would ultimately use up the budget if every teacher attended, of course, uh, for the funding for professional development. So I have made school visits and I've met with all the new and newer CT teachers that Heidi had indicated to me who were newer and newer. And one of the things I'm finding is that because of the teacher shortage, that in, in some areas, the teachers don't only need support with CTE information, they need support with curricula. They need help with finding appropriate materials. They need help with the teaching part of their job. So this position is, is a great fit for that as well and supports that need as well. Uh, November 17th, we had a PD session in Teams for new and newer CT teachers. Uh, we talked about reporting requirements for completers, how they can track their students from one year to the next to make sure that their students are signing up for the right classes that they need to be completers for the next year how they can support their simulated workplaces and the career tech ed student organizations like FFA and FBLA. So those were the kind of things what we talked about with them. January the 10th, we're having a career work skills training as a new CT program this year. Four of our high schools have it. Uh, I'm going to have a, a session with them with the Kanawha County Coordinator for CWST. She's going to work with our teachers on being able to make it so that employers in our area are contacted by four different high schools. <laughs> um, so we're going to try to coordinate some of those efforts. Uh, but that is coming up on January 10th. And then on around the 24th, we still have to nail that down with the all of the CT teachers on new data reporting requirements. NOCTI, which is um, an organization that supports CTE and actually uh, um, employers as well, industries in, as well. Uh, the Classroom to Career Portal at NOCTI is going to enable our students and our teachers to be able to record information. If a student spends five hours on a community service project, there's a place in this portal for them to record that. They record the hours that they spend, not just on community service projects, 
the time spent in their simulated workplace, um, internships that they may have, they can record the time there as well. Uh, there are different buckets that are appropriate for the different types of activities that they're involved in. Um, but at, at that professional development, um, there will be training on that NOPTI classroom to career uh, portal. And then in second semester, we'll continue the PD for the CT teachers. And I want to have a program of study. Professional development session, meaning that all the business teachers get together for a session, all the ag teachers get together, all the ROTC, all the human services. So in these sessions, um, they're going to be able to talk about any concerns they have. They can share ideas, um, instructional. We have our textbook adoption coming up in the spring. It's now called instructional materials adoption instead of just textbook adoption. Uh, it's going to be a huge endeavor. It happens every seven years. I remember when Cindy Vizzini was a CT director in Harrison County. I was at Liberty High School. And I remember Cindy, um, I did the adoption from my classroom. And I remember Mrs. Knight saying, why are you doing the adoption? And she was trying to you know, help, uh, but it was a big undertaking. So um, it'll be done again, and I'm sure I'll be heavily involved in the process. Uh, the things, I know that things have changed. The types of materials our teachers are using have changed. Uh, so um, it has been a while since we did one. But I know this time there may be certain programs of study that won't order a book or maybe not even an ebook. There's so many other ways that they can meet the CSOs and so many resources that are all some of them already created for them specifically for what they teach. So um, that'll be a different thing. That's instructional materials uh, adoption in the spring. So. I am emailing our teachers with updates, giving them information about when uh, information data has to be reported to this office so we can report that data to WVDE. I'm helping them with simulated workplace issues, purchasing procedures, learning about codes that are 80 miles long, uh, trying to help them make sure that they, I even created a purchasing procedure, one, two, three, four, five, for the teachers and one for a CTE director because their their process is different and the teachers don't need to know all of the things that go on, but they need something that would help them, especially the new ones to have it in a list. Um, so those are the kind of things I've been trying to help them with questions about subcodes, travel costs, just anything you can imagine. Um, so the next large area CT advisory committee meetings. There is a countywide CT advisory council. It's attended by uh, employers in the area and representatives from higher education. They are required to meet twice a year, and we met November 30th at RCB. And Mr. Jerico and I coordinated the meeting um, after Heidi had left. And the committee members met uh, and toured Robert C. Bird's um, Bird's Eye View. It's the student news channel. They toured that stage. Uh, and then um, Michelle Allen has let us do lunch, a simulated workplace at our CV and her students, her hospitality students served them lunch, served the committee lunch. So it was um, a good meeting and it lasted three hours. It was, um, it ended with a couple members just sitting there talking about ways they could improve opportunities for students in Harrison County. So these meetings, albeit long, uh, very, very helpful to have these employers in the same room with Pierpont Community Technical College reps. There was a lot of conversation going on. A lot of good information was um, exchanged. And I don't know if you guys know Tracy Miller, but she's the president of one of the big uh, four aerospace companies. And she is a huge advocate uh, for Harrison County Schools. And Heidi had given me her information. She is on our countywide CT advisory committee. She also sits on the HCAT program advisory committee uh, in Bridgeport at Bridgeport High School. Um, she's also helping with the Perkins Collaborative Reserve Grant, which was last year, uh, may have been the first year for it from the file folder that I have. Uh, it is basically a grant 
that provides opportunities for um, it was it was applied for middle school students to be able to go to our CBI and do STEM projects and learn about STEM and tour the aerospace companies. And I am more and more hearing from parents and students who are going into it. Gabe Howe from RCB is going into it. I heard from a student yesterday that I saw out that said that they were going to start that training program. It, I'm hearing more and more. And so these things that are happening are going to work and are starting to work, um, especially when you hear a kid that you didn't think would do something like that now knows that it's a possibility for them to. So uh, the the countywide CP advisory committee and then um, every program of study in your CT departments is supposed to have also their own advisory committee. The ag teachers are supposed to have an advisory committee meeting twice a year. Some of the schools have uh, employers in the area that they've worked with uh, that they have a good relationship with. So they have their own advisory committee meetings. Um, some of them do not. So I have been asked to make sure that they um, that they have these meetings with employers. And what it ends up being is not just do the employers come in and give them feedback on the equipment they're using, the technology that might be new, the processes that might be new uh, that they let our teachers know about, but also these employers become resources for our schools. Uh, they become resources for field trips, for speakers, for curriculum. Uh, bb and Bank, now Truist, offers Everfi.com for free. And they have a food truck project. They have um, entrepreneurship uh, lessons on there and, and a lot of good things that the kids really like, really hands-on type of projects. And if you are needing help with a special project, for example, employers are there. Um, but they do have, there's more that happens at those meetings than just a one-way interaction from the employers looking at what the teacher are teaching and then telling them, you know, we don't do that much anymore. They also tell teachers what type of tests they give their employees, especially for the business programs, the ones, the students that are learning Microsoft Office, Adobe software. It was really great to hear that manpower who was one of the people that I invited to that meeting for the business teachers, it was great to hear that they still give a keyboarding test because our students, guess what? They still learn keyboarding in Microsoft Office in that, in that class, BCA, Business Computer Applications. Part of it is keyboard. It's a bell ringer, but they do, by the end of the year, the kids' speed, it does go up, their accuracy goes up. Um, so hearing that manpower still gives those kind of tests and the FBI, uh, 40 words a minute, so these kind of things that the students, the skills that they're learning do make them marketable. And when you hear employers tell you what your students are going to face when they go to the, when they go there, it helps them to be prepared. So this relationship is will improve our students' ability to be marketable and to be ready for the type of skills that they're wanting. Manpower, I added them because they not only hire for office occupations, they hire all kinds of jobs. So the people from Manpower have a unique perspective and they can add to the discussion a lot. So they definitely will be coming back. Uh, I do um, hope that we can you know, continue to grow these program study meetings so that not just business, but all of our different programs and studies have a CT advisory committee that meets twice a year like they are supposed to. <laughs> and like I said, a lot of the teachers have a personal relationship, I did, uh, I even have a personal relationship with a, uh, the Clarksburg, um, the CAPE, Clarksburg Area Postal Employees Credit Union, and CWV, another credit union. They came and did a um, an activity called Mad City Money with my students for years. And I ended up putting two students at that bank for an internship 15 years ago. So when you get these relationships created, it does cause things to happen. So the more that we can get these employers in the same room with these teachers, the more that we'll have things will be productive and help meet all of our goals. So now um, the internship and job shadowing opportunities, the one listed there at the top, Clarksburg Waterboard Internship with Ag Students from Liberty. So this actually started before COVID. There had been a meeting and Mrs. Knight was on that meeting. And when I was hired, uh, I was given 
Mrs. Stutler gave me Jason Myers's, the partial water board manager, gave me his card and said, you need to call him. So um, I reached out to him and to Mrs. Knight because I read in the file that there had been this meeting. So to reaffirm both of their commitments, um, reached out to both of them. We had a meeting and then Mrs. Knight is going to come up and tell you about that because it's uh, it's a great opportunity for our students and, and I want her to be able to share. If I can interject real quick, that, that was four years ago. I think I brought, I'm a former board member of the Clarksburg Water Board, so it was near and dear to my heart. So I brought that four years ago and was wanting this. So I'm glad I went to the uh, Christmas uh, luncheon <laughs> last week there and they're all the buzz about, I mean, they won. There are four, uh, you know, West Virginia Rural Water Association, uh, there are, I think 400 some members of that. So out of those 400 members, even if you're a public service district that doesn't make your own water, you have to employ a water operator. Uh, and the average age now is in the 50s for water operators. So there's a big need for water operators and they're very good paying jobs. So, the, I mean, this is an excellent opportunity for them. It's one of the, you know, Clarksburg Water Board is one of the largest water utilities in the state of West Virginia. The fact that they're begging to come into our schools, you know, that was four years ago I brought that. So I'm glad to see that it's, that it's come to fruition. Yes, I'm, I'm glad too. I mean, it's a pilot, the first yeah. pilot. Stay. Thank you all. <clears throat> Excuse me. This was really exciting for me because I thought maybe that had just gone away. And uh, when Dr. Beckett called and said, hey, we're interested in this and the water board's interested in this again. Are you interested? Yes, I am. Um, Mr. Cox, Al Cox, who is now a member of the water board, he came to that meeting. He specifically wanted Liberty High School to be the pilot program. They do not have a pilot program for a pre-apprenticeship in the state of West Virginia. So this would be the pilot program that they would potentially model after. Um, we had an excellent meeting and it lasted over two hours. And there was so much that we got worked out during that brief period of time. I'd like to just give you a few details about it. Um, the pilot program to start out would only have one to two students. They don't want to make this too big until they see exactly how much goes into this, how much room and space they have. So we're gonna start small. Um, and then the pilot program will last anywhere from two to three years, probably looking at three years so that we have a couple cycles of students go through and then they will have a good idea of what they're working with. It was extremely interesting to note that everybody had to have at least a level one operator in their area. That Clarksburg Water Board just hired three, but they took them from Buckhannon. So now Buckhannon's looking for them. There is not enough people out there trained in this area to fill these positions. And these are good, well-paying positions that these men that are 50 years old now have made a living at, and as they said, a very nice living. So I was happy to see that they wanted to begin to implement that in our community so that in the future, some of these students that we put through this program will become people who will work at our water facilities, whether it's the water treatment plant, whether it's the wastewater treatment or some other area that goes into that. The pre-apprenticeship program is accredited through the Department of Labor, and it is funded by the USDA through the West Virginia Rural Water Association. Our goal is to give students um, with a background in agriculture education, marketable job skills, and increase the number of qualified applicants that the Water Board will have for positions, not just locally, but throughout the state in water treatment um, facilities. The students selected for the program would spend half the school day as operators in training at the Clarksburg Water Board. They would begin that their junior year. Now for the first year, which would be next year, we would put one senior in and they would actually complete as much of the program as they could in one year. Um, so during their senior year, um, the student would be able to earn SAE credit for their career technical program 
and during their junior year, they would receive high school credit. They would go out much as they do down to UTC, so they would be working, you know, out in the in the field. The training for this program, which before when we talked um, four years ago, the training was going to be done by our people. And we were all a little hesitant on that because we didn't know anything about water treatment plants. And my teachers at that time were a little bit nervous about them trying to teach content of something they knew nothing about, and then the students going there to implement those skills. Well, now the West Virginia Rural Water Association is taking over all of that training. So they have their own manual, they have their own coursework, it's all been approved. So they do all of the training. We just supply them with the students and monitor, monitor their growth and their progress. Um, Robert Davis, who works at the Clarksburg Water Board, he would supervise that training and the coursework and the job skills that the students have mastered, keep records of those. So they would have a documentation record or documentation keeping um, list of things that they would be looking for as the students went through this. The materials are provided by the West Virginia Rural Water Association. During this two, pro, two year program, they are enrolled as pre apprentices So the labor department, their policies require you to be, an, be employed by the water utility before you can be an apprentice. So what the students would be doing is they would be earning hours to enroll into that apprenticeship program. At the end of their senior year, after two years in this program, they would earn about 750 hours during each year. To get into that apprenticeship program and through that, I believe it's about 2,000 hours they have to accumulate. So we talked also that after their junior year in that summer, the water board felt that they could employ the students, even if it's for just a three or four week period, a paid employment for them for their summer, which is another incentive to bring them back as a senior to complete that pre-apprenticeship program. They also talked about during that pre-apprenticeship as a senior, the students could get work-based experience where they could also pay them their senior year. So that is another incentive. A lot of kids want to go out and they want to go to work. And here's an opportunity for them as a senior to go out, go to work, earn money, and earn the skill at the same time. And still maintain the hours that they would need to get the, uh, accumulate the hours that they would need to get toward that apprenticeship. Um, the um, development of the program, how are we going to start? That was another thing that we talked about. And like I said, we did so much at that one meeting that it was just amazing. I walked out of there and felt like everything was already taken care of. Um, we'd like to start them in the fall of 23-24. And um, we want to start one junior and one senior. The following year, that junior would continue into the program as a senior and would serve as a mentor to the new incoming junior for that year. To begin our first year, how we would do this, and I've already talked to Mr. Tennant, who is my lead ag teacher, and he and Ms. Seckman have looked over some of their students, asked him to give me a list of students that you think would have the skills and the ability and be responsible and able to do this. Give me a list of about 15 students. So they are looking at that. What we're gonna do is take them on a tour maybe a two hour tour of the water board. Just this is where you would be working. This is what the facility's like. Following that tour, Dr. Beckett and I are gonna to put together an application that the students would have to complete in order to try to get into that program. Once they've completed the application, we'll take those applicants and we will take them over to the water board for a full day. And at that time, Water board member said, you know, at the treatment plant, they're going to give them some hands on experience that day. So.
So following that, we would have an interview with school members and Clarksburg Water Board, people from the treatment plant. Because as they told us, they're gonna be able to have an idea of which students are gonna be really able to do this by the end of that first day when they give them some hands-on things. And um, I was really excited by that because a lot of times kids go into something that they think is gonna be a glamorous profession only to find out that, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do this at all. So I want them to have a taste of what they're going to do. I want them to see, this is what this job involves. This is what I'm going to learn. And for them to be so willing to do all of that coursework training, that's the other exciting part because they know what's going to be required. They know what these students will need to know in order to be successful in the apprenticeship program. So that's where that's what they want to push them. They said, we said, well, how much math do they need to have? They said, basic math. We'll teach them the math that they need to know for our system. And so, you know, we've got our kids, we've got them going up through algebra two. And like they talked at that meeting, Sometimes kids wonder, why do I need to know algebra? Where am I ever going to use this? And he said, we show them that it doesn't. We don't talk about it being algebra. This is what you need to do in order to get this together in order to do this at the, at the treatment plant. So they're going to work on all of those types of skills and get them ready. So I'm really excited about that. And there's only one thing that is left for us to do, because I think we have him pretty well laid out. And that's for Dr. Beckett and I to sit down and develop a memorandum, memorandum of understanding. And then what I'm doing here tonight, I'd really like to ask your approval to go ahead and move forward with this project. I think it's one that um, will help us to not only help our students, but also to help our community. And we have so many students who once they graduate college or graduate high school, they go off to the oil fields or they go here or there. We're not keeping enough people in our state. And I think this is one way that we can do this. And after this two or three years, there are several public service districts around that we, we could then expand this possibly out. Water Board may expand it to another school or maybe two other schools, depending upon what they find as to be the limit that they feel that they can have at one time with students. So with your blessing, um, I'm excited about this pilot project, and I think that this is something that is going to serve not just the students, but the community, not just now, not tomorrow, but for years to come. Thank you. That, and with that, I don't know that we have to have an actionable item, but I would ask that it be placed on the next Looking agenda. Uh, uh, an MOU, and the reason is I, I'd actually like to have the water board here when we do that as well. Uh, you know, at that next meeting, have uh, Jason or someone from the water board because not I, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I'm not only 100% in favor, but I hope this is the start of 100 more of these coming from other mm -hmm. industry. But I know from the water standpoint, these are not, you know, low paying jobs. These are high paying jobs, and uh, so it's a good place to start. And uh, I'm a fan of CTE, so keep it rolling. So, so if I could interject two things, <clears throat> can you mention so that the, the paper and media can understand what the starting what starting salary? I mean, you brought that up a couple times. He did not mention what the starting salary okay. was. Okay, I think it would be good for some of these students to find that out. I don't know what the starting good. salary, but I can say that in in, mm -hmm. in the newspaper can certainly check with Mr. Myers over mm -hmm. there. But generally, a water operator is in the sixty thousand dollar range. I think that's important. They're they're very mm -hmm. they're difficult to come by, uh, and when you have a job that that uh, is required, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you can name a better salary. Yeah. When when they have to, you know, Clarksburg Water Board has more than one operator. Uh, they can't function without an opera, at least one operator, and they have several operators. Mm -hmm. Public service districts, you may have a small public service district and they don't even make their own water, but they have to have a water operator. Well, you can imagine, so you've got one that's maybe covering 10 different ones. You know, so he's, he's you know, I know folks at the Clarksburg Water Board have had to go down and take 
additional jobs at other public service districts. So they're making their salary plus, you know, the salary from that. So these are very good paying salaries. And the other thing too, Mr. Devon, is that level one, that's just the entry level. Mm -hmm. right. They have four levels that you can get to. And the other thing that they did tell us was that, you know, for someone going, once they start into that and they get to be that level one operator, if they want to go take some college classes and they pass that college class, they would reimburse them for the cost of their tuition. So, so they would allow them to continue to gain skills in, you know, in a, in a lot of areas that may be affiliated with that water treatment. So the more, the higher up they go in those levels to get to that level four, the higher the salary is, but the more time they have to invest in it too, with um, what we call continuing education. So the, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, Dr. Beckett, is we have a, a, a great relationship with the Harrison County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Superintendent Stubler sits on the board, and one of the things that I think um, we can use, and I've, and I've said this for years, is use the chamber as a conduit for other businesses to do the same thing that you're doing with, with this particular scenario. Uh, find the skills that these businesses in, in the Harrison County Chamber need for workers. I've been waiting <coughs> for two months to be invited to a meeting at the Harrison County Chamber of Commerce. I will get you at the next meeting. No. I've emailed <laughs> Kathy Wagner three times. Um, in fact, when we had our college and career fair, uh, it's funny that you brought this up, but we had our college and career fair. Um, I wanted my email with the registration flyer to go out to the employers and had not been. So I sent it to her and asked her to do that. Nothing happened. And then Tracy Miller, the lady I was telling you about, um, she sent it to mm -hmm. her and several economic, Harrison County Economic Development Council people as well. Uh, and two weeks went by and it still hadn't went out. So then, and you know what, I'm putting myself on the chopping block by telling you this right here, but I'm just going to tell you. That's the way it's happened. Mm -hmm. And Tracy said, Jerry, get back with me a few days before, get back with me November 1st. The event was November 10th. Tracy said, get back with me November 1st, Jerry, let me know how many employers you have. <clears throat> so I got back with her. It hadn't went out yet. Mm -hmm. They hadn't pushed it out. So I got back with Tracy. I said, we have eight. Eight. She said, I said, yes. And and so she pushed it out again. And she, and her subject line was, this is pathetic. And so <laughs> she put it out and and then it still was two or three more days. But I did get an email from Ms. Wagner saying that she did send it out. So the last three or four days before the event, we have it's calling, phones are ringing, emails going. And so the night of the event, we had some people staying there that didn't have a table because we didn't even know they were coming because they just decided to show up. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get them what they needed. And they had a really, really great event. There ended up being about 30, and about 60 altogether, 60 employers and educational reps. Good. So there were at least 30 employers there. So it was great. And one thing I want to mention about that is when I interviewed for this job, Mr. Lopez had asked me um, how, what can you do to improve apprenticeships with our labor unions in the area? What can be done with that? Yeah. And so when we had the career and uh, college fair, I thought about that. And so I got a hold of a friend that is an IBEW hall over at Northview. And he gave me the email. This is how this job works, this liaison position that you guys have hired me to do. This is how it works. So I got a hold of the lady that Shane gave me the number for and explained to her what my position was, what I was doing, and what I needed. And she said, send me the registration Good. and the email. So I sent it to her. She sent it out. We had four internationals show up. We had um, electricians, pipe fitters, carpenters, and one other one was there. I went around, introduced myself to those gentlemen, gave them my card, they gave me their card, and then I um, talked to them to see if they'd be interested in speaking to our students over at UTC in those programs. And I talked with Matt Call ahead of time to cover, you know, to make sure he would be open to them 
approaching their instructors. And Matt said that there were a couple different locals that did come in on a regular basis, but he said he would welcome that. And he <clears throat> told me anything you need, let me know. So um, I'm going to be checking back after the first of the year uh, with those reps that I spoke with that night. I let them all know they were perfectly welcome to come in. Please come in. Uh, we're talking, you know, maybe field trips, speakers, um, and eventually setting up those apprenticeships that Mr. Pence had talked about. So that's how a lot of this. Circling started. back to the chamber, yeah. we had an educational uh, forum, and the meeting was all about they they want to reach out now to the schools to get internships. So that's coming up in January. That, that is something that we talked about a number of years ago. Yeah, the chamber was with, they're kind of finalizing that. Yeah, job shadowing or 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 you know um, internships. So, Mr. Pavana, do they meet every month? Yes. No, no, I, quarterly. Sorry. Yeah. Quarterly. They meet quarterly. Okay, I have. I didn't know. <clears throat> I, I will yeah. speak with them. Superintendent Sutler's on. Yeah. The Okay. They're it. just revitalized. Well, I knew yeah. we were members because I got on the website and found out that Harrison County Schools is a member. Mm -hmm. Even mentioned in my email, you know, we're members. <laughs> I like to come and represent my. So we'll take you. We'll, we'll get you there. <laughs> I appreciate it because I'm supposed to attend community meetings, and I have been. Uh, but that is one that I particularly would like to attend. Oh, all the businesses are there. Thank you. Thank yes, awesome. Awesome. Thank well, thank you. Thank you for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Um, we have a couple more things to oh, find. Okay. Um, so on that page down below Clarksburg Water Board, the Youth Apprenticeship Project, uh, there's some things going on at United High School, particularly for special ed students. Mm -hmm. They have the Youth Apprenticeship Project uh, funded by the Department of Labor for local car dealerships in the area who need service employees. Looking at Dan Cava Toyota possibly for a partnership there. Ashley Satterfield and I are working with Stefania Meadows from the Department of Rehab Services. They have the work program at United High School for special ed students. And the students are in the classroom for two days a week. Then they go out to the job site. It could be the Bluebird, Harrison County Schools Warehouse, Sam's, Harry Green, Alboy Pet Grooming, Price Cutter, Eastern Pet Supply for two days a week. Those are some examples of where they go. Then on Fridays, they have guest speakers, field trips, things of that nature. Students at United also do weekly shopping, packing of food bags. Um, for the food challenge students there and then students in the work program do the Phoenix fill up a snack cart that they sell snacks and beverages from and Watersmith Park. There's going to be an opportunity there for our special ed students at United to partner with Watersmith Park for an one week paid internship in the spring for 40 hours. So and the next one I'm excited about the middle school opportunity. <clears throat> We're talking about CT in high school. Well, now the discussion has been for the past few years. CTE at the middle school level as well. So Stonewall Jackson Memorial Hospital in Lewis County worked with the seventh and eighth grade students from Lewis County for a three day academy during a school break, like spring break, Thanksgiving break. The students went to the hospital. This was pre COVID that it happened, but they did it a one or two years and the students get exposed. They can choose what departments they want to shadow in. They get CPR certified, they learn basic first aid. They do, they sit down at one point with them after they've had a chance to see a lot and they say, what interested you? And then when they hear the kids, they're at the table, the kids are just talking freely. And then they tell them what they need to do to be able to get that job, type of education they need to be able to get that job. So they also um, come away with scrubs, memories, uh, they're in stethoscope. Uh, they actually get to witness a surgery. They practice taking blood through a simulator. They give EKGs, they do vital signs, and they also look at different parts of the hospital. Sometimes not just the medical part, but all hospitals have kitchens, they have offices, they have maintenance, they have some <clears throat> basic offices as well and departments like other businesses. So that is something that is going to come up um, Heidi and I went to visit Amanda Landis from this hospital and asked her if she would work with our students in Harrison County at South Harrison Middle School since it's so close and she said they would. So uh, she's going to get back with me after the first of the year and <clears throat> we're going to be working with 
South Harrison Middle. I waited till Miss uh, Skidmore got settled in just a bit and then approached her. She gave us our approval, her approval for this. So we will be meeting with them uh, after the first of the year to start uh, what we need to do to get that ready for our eighth graders, South Harrison Middle School. And uh, new initiative, CT Awards Assembly, CT inter inter Inventory Share. So the Awards Assembly at RCB and some of the principals heard me when I met them at principals meeting about this. Um, at RCB a couple years ago, they wanted to make the Awards Assembly shorter. So they changed the CTE completers that normally would get corded. I would cord them, the CTE teachers cord them, give them a certificate up on stage in front of their family and friends. So that wasn't going to happen. They were only going to be stand and recognize, stand to be recognized. <clears throat> and that was not good enough for Michelle and I. So we knew that Steve would support us and he did. And so we created the CTE Awards Assembly. Um, and it went really well. We have a script that I'm, I really am hoping now if the school has, has it, has it in their regular program and they don't have a problem with it and everything's fine, then that's great. But if, if it would be needed, I can have a, a full script that I can share with them that they could use. Uh, the, the parent invitation to invite the parents to come in, I can share that with them. So I'm hoping, uh, and this is one of the things Mr. Drico um, had talked about with me when I was first hired, that we're trying to get these things not just in one school, but in all the schools if needed. And then <clears throat> the CT inventory share, <clears throat> Uh, in an effort to conserve resources, uh, we wanted to see what equipment may not be being used in all the centers, in all the schools, in the CT departments. So, and, and this is something that is that I have not started working on yet. I'm trying to, we're trying to cover for until they hire someone in Heidi's position, but this is something where what we would do is we would send out a copy uh, every school has a copy. The CT teachers have a copy of their inventory, the equipment they have. That's over $100, I think, something like that. And we would have them identify things they don't use. Anything you have that you don't use that you think someone else might be able to use, highlight it, circle it, whatever, give it back to me, and then I'll collate a list and create a list of the things that aren't being used that you might want to share or you might want to give to someone else to use. And the things they're not using, <clears throat> we would then transfer it if another teacher wanted it. Nobody would know where it came from. They would just know it's available. And then we could share those resources. Um, sometimes when you push technology on people, they may not use it. Now, if, usually if a teacher wants to use something, they will reach out and ask for it and, and they will use it. Once in a while though, something that <clears throat> maybe won't get used, but is useful or could be useful. So we're going to have the inventory share and try to, to um, look at different resources we may have. Um, there is, let's see. And that's about it, actually. The very last couple pages that I gave you guys, I wanted you to see all the work that goes into, and I know you all have been on many meetings and read many, many minutes for many meetings, but this is the one that Mrs. Knight was talking about a little bit ago. <clears throat> These are the minutes that, of course, they didn't look like this when we first had minutes. I had four pages of single spaced ramblings and it took several hours to put it all together. But if you look at the very last page of what I gave you under the next steps section, uh, Mr. Hammer, you had asked about maybe um, coming back together uh, with the board, and we we will probably be ready to do that. If you look at under next steps, number one, Mrs. Knight and I will work together to create a draft of the application and the memo of understanding, and then we're going to have, they want, the Clark River Water Board wants to meet with us again after we create the drafts. Yeah, whenever you're ready to bring it to us. But Thank you. Let it know. And we we'll, will definitely we'll do that. Every, if we're going to do it, they may as well be invited. Oh, absolutely. Love to have them here. And they want to be involved on any interviews that, that we have with the kids. They want to be there for the field trips to answer questions. So um, after we uh, formulate a rough draft and then we meet with them near the end of January, we plan to meet with them again get their feedback on the application, the students will fill out an memo of understanding, and then we'll create the final drafts for both of those documents. 
And then Mrs. Knight will present the memo of understanding to the superintendent and the board for approval and signature. And we, of course, will invite the Water Board and West Virginia Rural Water Association representatives as well. And then a tour date for students will be set and groups will be kept around 15 students and everybody had positive things to say. So that's what I wanted to bring to you tonight to let you know what's going on. Any questions? How many students did you say actually is going to be involved in the program? This is not one to well two each year. So um, that's all the water board wanted to start with. They want to start small and then increase that as the pilot goes on and they see how much more, how many more students they could actually take on. So that this first year we will get two students. One will start as a junior, the other one will start during their senior year. And they said if we run out of space at one facility, there's other facilities the students could be placed at. I was thinking Sun Valley for you also there, you know, sometime. Yeah, and that's that's what he said. There were just numerous places mm -hmm. around that, you know, if one facility got too full, right. they could send them to another facility. So I think they're looking at expanding, mm -hmm. but they want to make sure that this pilot is going to work and the way we go about it, because I think that's what ultimately they want whatever we do to be the pilot for the state. Thank you. I think. And you can tell someone said CTE because Ray showed up. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything to add? No, no, not yet. There for the, I'm coming though. Okay. <laughs> All right, with that moves us down to delegations. Do we have any delegations? No delegation, superintendent's update. Sure, I just have a few things. If you'll look in your packet, I did include the goals, the copy of the goals. Um, I don't if it's not on there for action. It's just a copy for you to look at. So I did supply that to you. And then I also want to update you. You know, we completed the school culture surveys. Those results only are shared with the school. So we have to collect those back from the school and collate the results to give to you. So we're working on that right now. We're getting the schools to send those back. It's interesting. The state only gives those results back to the school principal and the school staff. So. It's interesting when you do a countywide survey, and, but so we're working on that. Uh, the other thing I want to say, since Rafe is here and I'll do it during curriculum, he represented um, Harrison County at our last superintendent's meeting in Charleston. He had a group down there from his classes at um, Bridgeport High and you got rave reviews. I actually spoke with the superintendent and he appreciated it. We also had a student there from Bridgeport High that <laughs> did a poetry reading. She is a poet. I don't think she's a poet laureate, but she's a poet, uh, poetry. West Virginia poet. Poetry out loud. Yeah, poetry out loud. She was wonderful. So we were well represented in Charleston. And so thank you to Ray for that. I know you're here for the other yeah. piece, but uh, we we had kind of commandeered that whole superintendent's meeting. So that that was uh, that that was a, a great little thing for those for those students to do, and a chance for us to. Uh, help um, uh, other counties showcase what showcase they're doing. What the benefits are. We had a representation it's kind of each government. what each had the students speak about each course that they're taking and what they're learning. And we so. flew a drone and took your picture. Yes, that was Inside. kind of a mess, wasn't it? Yeah. That nobody would cooperate. The yeah. superintendents, we were just everywhere. <laughs> he was trying to get us all corralled yeah. for sure. And then <laughs> Jody, <laughs> Kim, and yeah. yeah. The, the meeting was at five exactly. and they were here to talk about to represent the nurses discretionary fund. So we're glad you're here. We've and already deposited. The we've check. already deposited <laughs> the check. So you, okay. you've got just a couple minutes to tell us how you use that money, Jody, because it's a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. You, um, I don't just a couple minutes prepared, yeah. but um, we we actually found we have more money than we thought we had. So um, we have used it various ways, um, anything from new mattresses to medications to glasses to dental work. Um, I'm just getting ready to pay a bill for bed bugs. So, you know, whatever the health need of the family is, um, we, we try to meet that need and we do that with that fund. And actually, I'm texting Dr. Delson and I'm like, well, guess what? I showed up at six o'clock for a five o'clock meeting. Oops, you know, I, I really miss you and, and we really, really, really appreciate what he does for us. Um, 
And he actually just texted me back that they're working on an endowment status for the school nurse fund so that we'll never not have it, which wow. is amazing. Um, because when we get together at state meetings, we are the only county that has this. Like, and people are blown away, the nurses are, because if you get a kid with gla that needs glasses or needs dental work or they just moved here from wherever and they don't have a medical card yet, this fund allows us to meet the need that day, that minute, we can just go pay for something and not try to find funds and not try to find a program or I mean yes we try to get them signed up with a medical card but that doesn't help them that minute and that's what they need is help right that minute so um as he always tells me keep spending the money and spend more money um but he it's <laughs> a great you? blessing great great blessing for us and to have him do this with for us for I don't know how many years 20 plus years now so it's wonderful, but we're sorry we missed it. And we're sorry we missed the show at five. <laughs> but anyway, we thank you. We're glad you're here now. Yeah. Thank you. The only other thing I have is Jimmy has a, a quick facility something. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, we, we did our bit over okay. today, and I'll go ahead and hand it to you so that you can see the <coughs> contributions that came in. So you can see that the low bid, I was not familiar and neither were, uh, neither was any of our facility guys with ADI. They were the low bid. However, uh, in speaking to uh, folks at McKinley, they're, they're out of uh, Ohio and they're a good company. Uh, we'll check their credentials, check through the state, and, uh, but they did get the low bid. We would, if everything checks out, on the third, the agenda for the meeting of the third, put on there to accept and be able to give them a notice to proceed. Um, and again, this is preliminary, so I don't really want to put out a whole lot of numbers. Uh, it did come in about $100,000 lower than um, what the estimated cost would be, which is a positive. Uh, Talk with McKinley today uh, explicitly about no change orders. Keep those prices uh, where they are and be able to continue to move on with uh, Joey Smile must say that, uh, to be able to move on with uh, those other projects. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. You sure can. Okay, so okay. Yeah, I thought it was, but I didn't want to. Is that what you're? Plan on alternate uh, one and two. Yeah, alternate one and two. So that that puts a, a you know that all sense and we'll have a new rope pipe and keep it. And uh, and that's that's you know that's a good thing. The equipment that we are looking to replace is is in the base bed, but some of the other equipment is less than ten years old. So we really do not want to replace that. Um, we did have them go ahead and look into what the replacement cost would be, but it wouldn't be prudent at this time to replace that. Okay. okay. That's all I have for superintendent's update. All right, that moves us down to consent items. Is there a motion to approve consent items? So moved. There's a second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. New business. Memorandum of understanding by and between Fairmont State University and Harrison County Board of Education. I make a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Other than you want to explain this is just continuation, correct? No, I actually it's new. This is something okay. new. Well, then explain. <laughs> We're just trying to uh, figure out a way to uh, help support students uh, that are interested in the operations side of aviation piloting. And uh, there are two courses that would be available to students at the high school level. 
And this would give them the opportunity to do that at, um, I think that we're looking at a reduced price. But the biggest thing for us that it does is it helps us get our students into a very competitive program. And, it, and, and if they're able to take these classes, successful with these classes, then the biggest thing that they get are like the two bonus points in the uh, interview process of 20 points, a 20 point interview process that, that might be the difference between them getting a seat and somebody else getting a seat. And so um, Fairmont State's uh, aviation program, particularly that uh, part 141 piloting program um, is probably the most economic one available to students anywhere near us. Um, Marshall is trying to get their program up and running. Uh, that is still not uh, very viable at this point, it looks like. I mean, they say that they're moving, but it's still it's still being uh, worked through for how they're getting done. And Fairmont is established. So I think that it's a good a good move for us to try to get our students um, uh, a foot in the door, so to speak. And the, the program that they're offering in the uh, aviation management is also a really good program. I, I know a past graduate of that program that actually served as a um, um, like the person in charge at, at Pittsburgh International Program. So there it's a good program. This is good for us and it's good for the students. All right. And I think the courses are starting. They wanted to start in the spring and when it's a it's yeah, ground, school, was, ground school yeah. starts in the app and is an after school program like it or after hours. And then there's an aviation maintenance program. But like. You can do this ground school in a lot of different ways, and if you don't do it through a part 141 school, uh, then it doesn't count towards your part 141 that ultimately leads to your um, certified flight instructor status, all those kind of things. So you can do ground school with a private pilot, um, pay for all that, do all that stuff, get your pilot's license, a part 61, and then you still have to uh, get a part 141 um, ground school. So this is good, this is good for our students? Yes. All right. Yeah. Any, fur any further uh, discussion? Sorry about all that. That's all right. Thank you for being here. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Out of state travel study request. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the out of state study travel request. There's a second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Prevention Resource Officer position at Harrison County Schools. Is there a motion on that? So moved to accept. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I will say that the news coverage was very good, and I think that there was a lot of good uh, that came out of that. What I've heard so far, it's it's made it regionally. Um, and I've heard from people in Mon County and uh, Marion County and Lewis County. And I, I, they're very impressed with what we've done. So I think that it's a great, great opportunity for us to to step into the light here to showcase something good. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Communities and schools memorandum of agreement. If you'll look at your packet, there's a brief overview you'd like to read. We're still learning about it. We were offered the the funding for the three uh, positions in the schools from the state. I attended the meeting in Charleston, and if you are familiar with community and schools, it's an initiative from Kathy Justice, and they have it in about, I think, 30 counties right now, and it was an opportunity, and they provided us an amount, then we decided, yes, we can do that. It really is the wraparound piece that's missing and it would be great. And I know some counties, smaller counties have it in all their buildings, this position, I mean, counties that have three or four schools and the county, it's Wyoming County, she has it in all of her schools. She said it is that missing piece. When you have a child that maybe has attendance issues, um, all the things that we work on are tiers of support per child. There's always that piece that connects that child to the home. That's what this piece is. It's a person that works directly with the families. They may be going in 
to homes. They, it could be a social worker type position. And they've been fully funded. I think Julie said that they told me three years now they're saving five years. So she's now kind of um, looking at it and getting involved. So there's meetings coming up. So we've decided to jump in. And this is also what you see on the news. Sometimes they offer therapy dogs. You see uh, the first lady with the therapy dog that comes with community and schools. So were there, were there criteria to choose the three schools that we chose? Or, or how did we choose the three schools that, that, um, that, were, chosen? that were chosen? Those were kind of, I, I talked initially when I came back with the information, I kind of I gave the packet to our mental health coordinator and she sat down and she had a, a chart of schools and what she felt they were missing. And so she really brought down that report that was before the pro officer thing. She brought down that report intermediate that report primary. And then we felt when we were putting in the student support for elementary there with Hannah that this would have been a great addition. And then I, the uh, thing with the pro officer happened really after that. The pro officer thing we've been working on. But, so that's where it came from was that and we can expand to other schools. There will be one at Norwood uh, this position as well because she is lacking additional support over there for sure. So they it it really will fill in all holes, I do believe, for our kids and what they need. It's not everything. There's not a 100 percent answer to uh, everything, but. It's a big piece of it. Speaking to superintendents that's rolled this out. Okay. Yes, I can't remember that again. I, can we read that? I don't know. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, sec uh, second, second, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No old business, no policy updates, personnel matters. They are before you. Oh, and if I can be back up, uh, we do need to have a special meeting, correct? Yes. Very quick Completely. special meeting on. We have two inter three inter or two. There's two positions, two positions yeah. that need to fill, and we want to get them filled as quickly as possible. Even if you have to call in, because I'll be here. Uh, can you do noon on this Friday to get those positions filled? Yeah. I mean, yeah. can't we do it? We want to post Friday. Friday. We do it if we do it that way. We can get the notice and do it at noon on. Friday. 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 It'll be quick. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. That'll allow us a two-day public notice. Okay. All right. With that, uh, we'll back up to the personnel matters in front of us. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve personnel matters, and um, I guess the job postings that are with it. The job description job descriptions. for the positions okay. for the elementary. OK, job descriptions. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, brings us down to uh, board member comments. Mr. I don't have it. Merry Christmas. Oh, no. Mr. Hogue. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye. Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> Same thing. Is there a motion to adjourn? So mm -hmm. moved. Move, second, then all those favors say aye. 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 Thank you for coming. <laughs>